All right, coming to the stage. You've seen this guy. He's been on cable. He's been on Johnny Carson, David Letterman. He's been all over the place. Brad Hutchings, you know you're the man. Yeah. Bring it on up here and come give him your comedy. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be hard to follow that, I know. <laughs> All right, you guys. Uh, this is my third appearance at the Carmen Bar since Mark and Matt rebooted this show. Um, last week, I had a great set. Uh, it was Periscope. Well, this guy disagrees with me. He says, no, 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 I didn't have a great set. I don't think he was talking to me. Um, anyway, I had a great set. It was on Periscope, and then Periscope goofed it up. Um, but fortunately, I had an audio recording. See, I have an audio recording as well. And uh, I almost cut the mic. And... Uh, <laughs> Um, anyway, it was great, but I don't have the video of it, so I do have an audio of it. Uh, it's on my website. On my way home, now I'm 46 years old. I got into my first car accident of my life. I was stopped. This is, I'm not making this up. I'm stopped, ready to make a, a right turn at a red light, and all of a sudden, smash. This lady smashes into the back of my Jeep. And I was like, okay, am I okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Is the dog okay? Because I just picked up the dog. Dog was okay. I got my license, my registration. I get out, I'm thinking, I hope there's no damage. And I look at the front of her car, and the license plate is smashed in, and the bumper's smashed in. I'm just thinking, this is terrible, terrible, terrible. And she gets out, and the first thing she says is, uh, sir, I'm so sorry, my brakes haven't been working well lately. And I'm just like, oh, that's a funny thing to say. And then she says, and my tires are really bald too. And I go, thank goodness, because I just had five drinks at the Carmen bar and I was fucked if you didn't have an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> so that is, that's a lie. I don't drink when I drive. Um, you see, I have iced tea there and I'll get a couple Diet Cokes at the, uh, at the bar later. Um, but uh, my, my Jeep had a little scuff mark on the trailer receiver. Uh, so uh, it got out unscathed. I was very happy. Yeah. Yeah. Some other bad news this week. Actually, this morning, uh, my sister called me and told me that my oldest and last remaining grandfather passed away last night. That's true. Um, he was a he was a super good guy. He lived a long time. I think he was almost ninety five years old, ninety five or ninety six. All of my grandparents lived well into their nineties. Um, so, you know, that should be good for me, right? But it's not because both my parents were adopted. So, um, I don't... I'm not going to necessarily get that benefit. Um, I'd like to tell you two stories about my grandfather. I called him my Gampy, um, because, like, when I was uh, two years old, they like, Gampy, Gampy! Okay, it stuck. It stuck for 46 years. Um, the first one is, because um, he he's this great guy. He was an entrepreneur. He was a roofer. He put the roof on Bob Hope's house in Burbank. Um, he then retired, he and my grandmother then retired to Oregon, um, where they built a log cabin house, where they had it built for him, but it was kind of cool. It was outside of Grants Pass. It was a really cool place to visit. They had a little irrigation ditch that my sister and I used to raft down, you know, every summer a few times. Um, there's this one time, and he, 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 he had all sorts of projects, like he had cars, and he had a, he had a workshop, and then he, one summer he made an apple orchard. And he was growing some apples, and while we were up there, one of the apples had, you know, some sort of a worm in it or something like that. And he, he had meant to, uh, you know, get some advice from local agriculture people about this apple. And so um, he put it in the car, and we went to get donuts one morning, and he forgot to go see the agriculture guy. So that afternoon, we were hooking up the trailer, and we were going to go out to Brookings on the coast and camp there for a few days, and then come back. And he had we would kind of forgotten that the apple was on the dash of his truck. So we, you know, we're, it's sunny and stuff, and we tow the trailer out to Brookings. When you go out from Grants Pass to Brookings, you have to dip into California. And, you know, at the time, this is like 25, almost 30 years ago, they had those agriculture inspection stations that were very stringent, you know, when you crossed into, the, into California. And um, 
there's this giant rotten, rotting, worm-infested apple on his dashboard. Sir, are you carrying any fresh fruits or vegetables into California? No. But it's right on his dash. Well, the guy doesn't see it. He just lets us go, right? So we go to Brookings. We have a good time. We're driving back, and I and we go back through the agricultural inspection station down dipping into California again. Sir, do you have any? Are you bringing any fruits or vegetables with you into California? And my grandfather says, No, no, not at all. Meanwhile, there's a five-day-old rotting, worm-infested apple sitting on his dashboard that nobody notices. And we get back, and. He notices finally that he's got this apple sitting on his dash and it's, you know, five or six days old. The worms are worse. It's really kind of bad. And we unhook the trailer and we go into town and he goes and brings it to the agriculture guy and he says, what do you think's wrong with this? And he goes, dude, it looks like it's rotten. So uh, that was his, that was the apple story. Um, the other story I'd like to tell about him, you know, talking about hockey and the ducks, uh, I noticed today that that Nashville advanced uh, the Nashville Predators with their uh, with their goalie Pekka Rin, eh, something like that. It sounds like Pekka Rin, um, kind of funny name for a goalie. Um, one of the things my grandfather was involved with was a Kiwanis club, and um, you know I have a lot of friends who've watched hockey their whole lives because I have a lot of friends who live back east, northeast. But uh, nobody knows O Canada like I know O Canada because I went to all my grandfather's Kiwanis meetings with them where they would sing O Canada and either the Sparse Spangled Banner or It's a Small World or This Land is Your Land or something like that <laughs> for America. Um, but yeah, I knew O Canada from that. So that's my tribute to my grandfather. Um, you know, I'll, I'll miss him terribly and, you know, I hope he's, hope he's in a better place. Um, last week I brought... I brought science to you guys. Science is very important to me. Um, you know, it helps us it helps us make good decisions in life. Um, one uh, one thing I knew I, I found out this week, and uh, you know, maybe maybe we have some coffee drinkers here. You know, anybody? Raise, raise your hand if you drink coffee. Okay. Yeah. All right. Raise your hand if you drink a lot of coffee. All right. I'm I'm guilty of six or seven espressos a day. I have a espresso machine at home, and I just I go after it. But anybody drink too much coffee? Raise your hands. You know? Okay. Turns turns out there is this guy says no such thing as too much coffee. It turns out European scientists have figured out there is no such thing as too much coffee. And in fact, the heavy espresso drinkers in Italy are much healthier with much healthier hearts and arteries and everything else. It's like everything that our doctors, everything backwards from what our doctors have always told us, you have to cut out the coffee. No, don't cut out the coffee. You'll live healthier, your brain will be more active, you'll, uh, you'll have a better life. So, coffee drinkers, good for you. Let's have a round of applause for the coffee drinkers. All right. Now, the second piece of science I can bring to you this week is uh, people who talk to themselves. Any of you guys talk to yourselves? Like, I talk to myself a lot, okay? I'll just, like, if you guys weren't here, I'd be talking to myself. And in fact, I really don't even notice you right now. I just pretty much notice the microphone, and it's like I'm talking to myself, okay? So, it turns out people who talk to themselves manage to sort things out better. They have a better disposition. They're quicker solving problems than people who don't talk to themselves. So, you know, if you talk to yourself, raise your hand and then give yourself a round of applause for talking to yourself. All right. Third thing science gave us this week. Let's, let's have a show of hands. Anybody eat their boogers? No one's going to admit that shit. All right, I'm going to raise my hand and say, I eat my boogers. Now, you ready for this? People who eat their boogers, now this is a visual thing, okay? Better teeth. Yeah. Okay. Um, and this is this is true. Better teeth, yeah. better overall health. They don't get sick as much. Uh, British scientists even believe that people who eat their boogers regularly more protected from HIV than the rest of you. So if that's a if, if that's a concern for you, you need to start eating your boogers. That, that get the show of hand of booger eaters right here. Let's have a show of hands of booger eaters. Let's go. Who's healthy? Who's healthy? Mark, thank you very, very much for the time. I couldn't recruit anybody to my ah. bugger eating mission. But maybe, uh, maybe next time I will.
Congratulations. Brad Hutchins, everybody. Give him a round of applause. Hey, and you guys can, uh, I'll, I'll come up later and do another set. You guys can find all my sets, now on video and audio, at yogurteater.com. Thank you very much. Shouldn't it be boogereater.com? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You just you you set me up. I have it. <laughs> you know, I got to say, what an honest thing to talk about eating boogers. Well, we're not going to go that direction, though, are we? No. Brad Hutchings, ladies and gentlemen, please, big round of applause for him. Come on. It's hard to get up here and do comedy.